We, we welcome each one of you, and uh, uh, we are going to join our voices together first with singing a hymn, a beautiful way to begin our service together. Uh, one of my favorite, related to the theme for today, Earth Sunday, Each Blade of Grass. Uh, more voices, 37. Let's join our voices together. circle of God. What beautiful poetry in that hymn. As we gather in this place, we acknowledge that we, and we remember that we are standing on traditional ancestral ground, the territory of the Silix Okanagan people. We are grateful for the stewardship of, its land, of the land and its resources, for their teachings from the sacredness and about the sacredness of this land. We gather embracing also those who have come before us, those who will come after us. Each one of us gathered here in this place and all those online in one community of care and respect, of love revealed together making full the circle of God. I wonder, even as we had, uh, I was introduced so graciously, I wonder if there are other people here today that, uh, that would like to be introduced. And that I don't know, you would maybe know. And if not, then, any special announcements before we move into the service? Oh, that hymn that we just sang about the forest, I wonder if you've heard of forest bathing. I am just hearing of it myself where people are going, they're calling it going out into the forest and bathing in the forest. And so it's kind of a thing that's part of wild church. <laughs> so I'm here. Um, and about rides for Joyce. So I have put together, um, kind of blindly, uh, a schedule for us to the end of June, because you know what? People are moving around, and some of our faithful drivers are on holidays, really, that's wonderful. So what you're going to find here is a schedule to the end of June, and your name may be on it, there's copies, you can take one. And you're also going to see that July and August is blank. We need more drivers to help with Joyce. And I have no idea what people's holidays are. So if you know that you will be here on a Sunday in July or August and grab a pen and put your name and phone number beside it, that would be most appreciated. So we can do this together. I'll leave them over here. Thank you.
morning, everybody. It's so nice to be back with all of you, and thank you. That means so much. Thank you so much. It's so nice to have Alice with us here today. Um, just a couple announcements. We're going to have a congregational meeting on May the 5th, and sorry, but we're not calling a new minister yet, but um, John and team are going to go over the profile and a few other things um, to maybe help us with the, um, the search going forward. And the other thing is the plant sale. Um, you've heard about the plant sale for the last few weeks. And um, it is on May the 11th. John and Lynn are looking after the food part. I'm looking after the plant part. And we still need quite a few more volunteers. So I have the, um, the um, bulletin here, or the, what do you call it? You know, the sign up sheet. <laughs> And I'll sit at the back after, and hopefully you will come and put your name on. So thank you so much. Any other announcements? And if not, then. We invite you now in that beautiful tradition that I remember, God Moments. And, um, uh, and we invite you to share any special moments that you've had in the recently. Uh, where you felt that presence of the holy close. Any God moments? Come on, Tom, you must have some God moments. <laughs> I think we have one here. Something that really struck me, we've been into Vernon a couple of times this past week, and it's worth the trip, folks. When you look on the hillside, the, what do we call it, the balsam leaf, something about a, yeah, arrow leaf, are, are just beautiful. And the thing that really struck me about it is those plants are really special. They can't be transplanted. They simply don't like to be transplanted. That's just all God's work out there, folks. And, uh, you can see where there's been development, where people have disturbed the earth. No balsam root there. So it's it's just a beautiful sight. And the, I mean, we have them around here too, but it just covers the hillside as you get toward Vernon. I feel I'm obligated now that Jim has uh, <laughs> has uh, buttonholed me. <laughs> Sonia and I uh, on Wednesday just returned from five weeks in Brazil. Lots of God moments, um, lots of things to be thankful for living in Canada when we see how others live. Um, one God moment was uh, seeing the sunrise from 40,000 feet up as we we're flying towards uh, Sao Paulo. Uh, another God moment was landing back home in Kelowna. <laughs> Yesterday, um, as we were waiting out on our driving pad in front of the house, waiting for our neighbors to come by and pick us up. They'd invited us out for lunch. I just, I looked at this tree, a trio of people standing in the middle of the road, just on the other side of the house next to us. And Anne Nightingale waved at me, they're going to be our new neighbors two doors down. And for me, that was just, I just thought, oh goody, and then David and Eleanor will be just around the corner soon. For me, that was a that was just a really great a, a, a great. I'm thank you, thank you. Very special moments, special resurrection moments in our lives, in this 
beautiful season of resurrection. We light, as we gather together, our candle. A candle that reminds us is an image of holy light, holy presence in our lives. A presence that is always with us and that invites us to move forward in this light, knowing that we never walk alone. Today, as I've said, is Earth Sunday. It's a Sunday set aside by many denominations, not just the United Church, but certainly many in the United Church, where we reflect on the gift of creation around us, its beauty and its goodness, the gift of the soil beneath our feet and the air we breathe, those, those early morning sunrises and so high up, what a blessing the budding orchards of our valley, too. And that early spring crocus and daffodil that colors our yards and our roadways. All of it, and, and I can't forget the chorus of, of birds humming in the skies as, as we step out in the early morning, maybe to let our dog out so early. All of it is a very special time. And so we honor. We honor as our hymn just started uh, us with themes like each blade of grass. We honor each silent paw. What a beautiful expression. Each silent paw. Every creature's way. And we use this as an opportunity to say thank you. Thank you to the giver of all good things. Opening us to the blessings that are all around us. Is, it's that rebooting of spring that's happening. It's the rebirth story. Offering fresh resurrection moments to so many of us. My focus will not be scientific. There are books, there are workshops, there are whole courses offered that would do a much better job than I could. Uh, the focus in the face of our reality today is to simply say that thank you. To say, to express our gratitude to the giver. To glimpse maybe once more and remember Easter moments, resurrection moments, the earth, skies, and seas full of color and life and wonder and awe. I have recently read a, a new book by Karen Armstrong. She's a theologian, historian, uh, author, and in her recent book, The Lost Art of Scripture, and there's not many who would grab a book like that titled Lost Art of Scripture, but I was curious, and I wanted to know what she had to say. She points out that scripture was always heard for ancient times in the context of ritual gatherings like this, that that ritual of music and liturgy offered the gift of stillness. It pointed to a very mysterious dimension of reality that was transcending our daily life experience, that evoked these attitudes of wonder and awe, of respect and reverence for the cosmos and other human beings. May our worship together today be such a transformation. And so we offer this prayer, I invite you to respond in the print, color that you're accustomed to. In the sounds of this worship and the silences in between, Creator God, we seek your wisdom. Let us grow in the wisdom held by you. Let us grow in the wisdom held by the earth, by each other. 
let us grow in our commitment to transforming our relationship with the planet again and again until the whole Earth community lives in life-giving, sustainable harmony. And we invite you to join your voices once more in the singing of the hymn, Take Off Your Shoes. I've sang that song. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you for the suggestion, uh, music team here. <laughs> We continue to acknowledge the holy ground by moving into a prayer meditation. It is a prayerful meditation offered by mindfulness teacher Susan Bauer Wu. And I invite you to begin by connecting yourself, your feet, with the earth beneath you. Pay attention to how it feels for your feet touching the floor on which it, they are placed. Notice how you're rooted through a chair or the floor to the earth below and how she is literally holding you unconditionally, effortlessly, compassionately. And on your incoming breath, as you fill up your lungs, notice, notice that all that comes is coming to you from the earth below, the air above, an ever-present, life-encompassing, compassionate earth sustaining you. And you are part of an effortless cycle of give and take, participating in an exchange with the elements, with other living beings, with the earth herself. Inhale earth's compassion. And with each exhale, Breathe out gratitude, compassion, and gratitude. And now the more difficult part. Visualize a place, a being, or a community that you love and care deeply for that is suffering from climate or environmental harm. Rested and rooted in this compassion and gratitude that you hold, access your intention, your motivation to alleviate the suffering of your beloved. When you inhale, breathe in suffering. As you exhale, breathe out compassion. Let yourself inhale the earth's gratitude for your existence. And when you exhale, offer the compassion and love you have for the earth. You are inextricably connected with her in every moment, and there is no division. Compassion. Gratitude, connection. May it be so. And we sing as we remain seated, beautiful Gaia, Mother Earth.
I recall a bird flying onto the ledge in the story I was watching of a child's home. The child breathless. She couldn't have been, or he was no more than 18 months, maybe less, maybe a bit more. And the child just simply watched the bird, reached out, and waited. And soon they became friends. I wonder what it would mean for a bird to call you friend. I wonder how, how does love come through such a friend as that? Recently, I have been listening in and participating in a, a, a Zoom uh, connection out of uh, the interfaith poetry for the journey from Bethlehem Center in Nanaimo, BC. I offer one of the poet, poetry uh, uh, sessions for that particular morning. And it's a poem that comes from Deborah Cooper. As you listen to the poem, there are gentle expressions of love and openness and awareness. Watch for those tangible love expressions. They're beautiful. Collecting Light, she said, called it, by Deborah Cooper. I see the way the chickadees take turns at the feeder. I watch a neighbor take her husband's hand. I see the way the sun will find the only interruption in dark clouds to toss this amber light across the pines. I see a row of cars stop on the road until the orange cat has safely crossed. Then take off slowly, should she change her mind. I watch the way my brother lifts my mother from the wheelchair to the car, the shawl he lays across her lap. I save every scrap of light because I know that it will take each tiny consolation every day to mend the world. Scraps of light. Every scrap of light a part of the mending of the world. I wonder when have you received such scraps of light? I wonder when you have offered such scraps of light. I wonder, too, what scraps of light would you add? Maybe over coffee, share one. These scraps are, light, are like a divine energy, a sacred energy. And this week, you and I can be, be that sacred energy, be that divine force. I recollect as I was praying for, uh, praying, well, praying to, uh, but as I was planning this service, these verses, and I'm going to be really curious who re here recognizes where they come from. I'm not going to tell you till after. When I think of Earth Sunday, I think of this. So God creates the universe and with it the possibility of being and relating. God tends the universe, mending the broken and reconciling the estranged. God enlivens the universe, guiding all things towards harmony with their source. Nobody recognize it yet? Put your hand up if you do. Grateful for God's loving action, we cannot keep from singing. Is that your clue? Who recognizes it? Yeah? Finding ourselves in a world of beauty and mystery, of living things diverse and independent, a complex pattern of growth and evolution, of subatomic particles and cosmic swirls, we sing of God, the creator, the maker and source 
of all that is. And it goes on. You've got to read it this week. <laughs> A song of faith. Right, Jim? Jim shake, nodding his head now. And that's the clue. I love that song of faith. It is a, it is a, a creedal-like statement that is about five or six pages long, and it goes through all the aspects of our faith. Beautiful poetic expression, uh, and um, and those particular verses, particularly, God creating, God tending, God enlivening. It, the verbs themselves are beautiful. And so grateful, again, that message of gratitude. We continue to express this gratitude through the singing of our next hymn, Creator God, You Gave Us Life. And I invite you to stand as you're comfortable. Creator God, you gave us what time it is 36 we move now to one more short reading I'll shorten it if I need to uh, that comes to us from a contemporary theologian Richard Rohr and I suspect that some of you read have some of his books I know there used to be some in the bookshelves back there uh, excellent theologian very solid theology offered he said, and I believe there's a quote there, Sharon, is it? You didn't get it in. That's fine. The quote is, when God manifests spirit through matter, then matter becomes a holy thing. The material world is the place where we can comfortably worship God just by walking on it, loving it, and respecting it. Everything visible without exception, is the outpouring of God. What else could it be, really? Imagine seeing such holiness just by walking on it, loving it, respecting it. Next time you're out walking, think about that, or biking. It's, it, is, it is amazing. Imagine seeing... Everything visible is the outpouring of God, uh, as love's force of the Christ in a blade of grass, a spider web, 
the story. What an alternate viewpoint we could witness in the world, a world that so needs an alternate message. Wisdom really does come through a real connection to nature. Society's sense of isolation and unhappiness is compounded by our lack of contact with nature. Nature's tangible expressions of God's love heals and restores what is broken. It offers moments of awe and wonder. And I think of that one and a half million people along the path of the total eclipse out in nature, gazing up and filled with awe, even for just those five minutes. So many of us rebooted, refreshed, intangible love expressions. These love expressions are also in our sacred scriptures, and we turn now to that. The story of Easter is a story of love made tangible. In the hands and feet of the risen one for the sake of the doubting ones. And maybe you've heard the stories recently, that tangible walking together of friends along a dusty path. The tangible around a breakfast gathering at the seashore. You and I need, we need to taste, we need to feel, we need to touch, and we need to see. The intangible God is understood through all these tangible natural revelations. The logos, the logos, or word becoming flesh in John's gospel. And now we turn to these familiar tangible expressions in the psalm readings. Thank you, Don. Psalm 23, 1 to 3. Yahweh, you are my shepherd. I want nothing more. You let me lie down in green meadows. You lead me beside restful waters. You refresh my soul. You guide me to lush pastures for the sake of your name. Psalm 104, 24 to 31. Yahweh, what variety you have created, arranging everything so wisely. The earth is filled with your creativity. There is a vast expanse of the sea, teeming with countless, countless creatures, living things large and small, with the ships going to and fro, and Leviathan, who you made to frolic there. All creatures depend on you to feed them at the proper time. Give it to them, they gather it up. Open your hand, they are well satisfied. Hide your face, they are terrified. Take away their breath, they die and return to dust. Send back your breath, fresh life begins, and you renew the face of the earth. Glory forever to Yahweh. And you know, it all began. It all began out of that topsy-turvy, that chaos and emptiness that we heard and know well in Genesis 1. The creator forming the earth and sky and seas, the seed of every kind, the seasons, days and years, light, the greater one to illuminate the day, the lesser one to illuminate the night. And God saw that it was good. As we reflect on this goodness, I wonder, I wonder how this goodness will be realized in the generations yet to come. What is the human responsibility in the midst of the environmental devastation of our time? This decade, maybe even this year. And we hear Chief Seattle's message written way back in 1854. 
that still speaks today. Thank you, Don. Every shining pine needle, every sandy shore, every mist in the dark woods, every clearing and humming insect is holy in the memory and experience of my people. Teach your children what we have taught our children, that the earth is our mother, the rivers are our siblings, they quench our thirst and feed our children. The air is precious to my people, for all things share the same breath, the beast, the tree, humankind, they all share the same breath. This we know. The earth does not belong to us. We belong to the earth. Humankind did not weave the web of life. We are merely a strand in it. Whatever humankind does to the web, we do to ourselves. All things are connected like the blood which unites one family. All things are connected. Thank you. Robin Wall Kimmerer. He is a pata, I'll see if I pronounce it right, Potawa Tommy botanist. He reminds us also, he's a contemporary, uh, reminds us of our place in nature and our responsibility. Many indigenous peoples, he says, share the understanding that we're each endowed with a particular gift, a unique ability, a gift that is blessing and responsibility. If the bird's gift is song, Kamurma writes, then it is a responsibility to greet the day with music. It is the duty of the birds to sing and the rest of us to receive the song. End of quote. Centered in indigenous understanding, Kamurma reminds us that humans from the indigenous viewpoint were actually lesser human beings in the democracy of species, younger brothers and sisters in the creation. We must learn from our elders, elders like plants. And I repeat that, because that surprised me too. Elders like plants, who were here long before you and I. They live both below and above the ground. They hold the earth in place. They know how to make food enough, not just to feed themselves, but to sustain the lives of all the rest of us. They are providers of generosity, always offering food. And so we must learn from our elders, elders like the plants, the, wi the wise ones that have gone before us and who walk this path with us, opening up the future to those who will come yet. Interesting questions raised in the article I read on, by Kamurmur, asking what is our responsibility is perhaps also to ask, what is our gift? How shall we use it? What can we give back to a plant that gives us so much? What will make the more than human creation glad that we are here? And if you would like to explore that further this week, and maybe some of you have already read it, I'll just quickly point out the broad view this last a month, I think it was a month ago, yeah, April, May, uh, the climate issue. Some excellent articles. Meet for coffee this weekend and talk about some of them. Uh, she raises, they raise, there's many writers in the magazine. The similar climate issues, particularly acknowledging the difficult time that we are facing now. And the questions that the magazine raises include, how are we doing and where do we need to go from here? 
How can we stay focused given the enormity of the task? One article that stood out for me helped me recall that years and years ago when I was teaching French as a second language at the high school, we had a chapter on recyclage, reusage, and, um, uh, and the uh, idea to reduce, reuse, recycle, and etc. And of course, when we think of that, those words, we think of what we can do individually. Pay attention when you look at that magazine to the article called Canada's Cold Reality. It invites and points out that the solutions to climate change now are yes, individual, but community. Community is even more essential in our response. We need the larger response. We need uh, all of us working together. Another article pointed out hope. It's so easy to feel discouraged. And yet this article pointed out that through a much broader base of voices working together, seeking renewal of the face of the earth, collective wisdom provided, provided answers, possibilities. Another writer reminded us that even as the problems get worse, the solutions are getting better. That's hope. We cannot afford to give up hope. It's time. Called by earth and sky. We want you to stay. As you're comfortable.
as you're comfortable. And I invite you to commit yourself in a faithful response to playing a part, however small, however large that might be, in building a world of care for the earth, seas, and skies. We will use an earth prayer that comes to us from the United Nations Environmental Sabbath Program, and it's called an earth prayer. We join with the earth and with each other. We join with the earth and with each other. Care for the plants to protect the creatures. We join with the earth and with each other. To sing the song of the stars. We join with the earth and with each other. In the community. To promote justice and peace. To remember our children. We join together as many and diverse expressions. Of one lovely history. For the healing of the earth. And the renewal of our life. You may be seated. And we invite at this time uh, our offering. We do not take formally the offering in our service, but we acknowledge that some donations have been placed in the offering box at the entrance, and Doug, I believe, will bring forward the offering box while we sing this offering response for the gift of creation. Join our prayers together in the prayers of the people. Loving and gracious one, you are the God of creation. You create in us faithful stewards of your world. Show us opportunities to make a difference, that we may live with respect in your creation. You are God of incarnation. Make us your heart and your mind, equipping us to work for change. You are a God of resurrection. Help us to see new ways and new hope, planting in us the seeds of restoration and renewal. God of creation, incarnation, and resurrection, may we go gently in this fragile world. And we hold in our hearts those people known to us on our prayer list. Sandy, David and Joan, family and friends of Anne Young, Gary, Gordon, Bill, Kelsey, Tanya, Louisa, Gary, Peter, Brian and Beth, Corey, Danielle and Rocky, Fran and Elwyn, and many others that we name in our hearts or out loud as we're comfortable. Christina Grant's brother, she's in Montreal with him, and he has 
been given um, three months. And so she is needing, they are all needing our prayers. When we gather these thoughts and prayers, the prayers too for those places, those places in the world that are facing, facing environmental de devastation, facing war and violence, the Ukraine, Gaza, Israel, the Sudan, places facing poverty, drought. In all these places, we pray for your refreshing rain that brings new life once more. We pray that you give wisdom to those in decision-making circles, that all may be guided to a place of peace and justice and the building of your kingdom of love and care. We gather these together as we pray together. Eternal spirit, earth maker, pain bearer, life giver, source of all that is and that shall be, mother and father of us all. Loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the earth. Your, your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and test, Strengthen us from trials too great to endure. Spare us from the grip of all that is evil. Free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. And we continue to express in prayer as we sing the song, Touch the Earth Lightly. I invite you to Stand in your comfortable way.
Go now renewed in holy grace and gratitude. In the name of the one who created all goodness, redeems all that is broken and sustains all as we journey together toward right relations with the earth and the whole created order. And as we go, we will count our blessings, embody our faith, live an authentic life, never look down on the struggle for life. Notice behind every face there is a soul at work and know that wherever we go, the Spirit of God is already there. Amen. And I have that very 